I'm Dr. Ryan Gustis, and I'm here to talk to you today about the top three reasons why patients are not buying contact lenses from you, and then how to fix them. And so first a little about myself, I am a practicing optometrist in Indiana, but in my other life, I'm also CEO and co-founder of LensQuote, which is a software company that helps other optometrists uh, sell contacts in their office. And I don't bring this up because this is, this is not sponsored content at all, but all of the content I'm about to share with you is directly related to helping these hundreds of offices. And basically I pulled the top three reasons why I see them uh, be unsuccessful. And then uh, once we fix these issues, they're incredibly successful. It's unrelated to um, uh, the software. So that's, that's not gonna be the answer for these things. So, you know, first I just wanna point out something. So if you really look, or if you're like most offices, I should say, your pricing, last time you looked at it, is probably relatively close to say the top competition, which is like 1-800 contacts. And yet the vast majority of offices tend to only sell about 35 to 40% annual supplies. Or actually, if you look statistically at the numbers, uh, we only sell about 40, industry-wide, we only sell about 40% of the uh, contacts or sorry, 60% of the contacts that we prescribe, we lose about 40% to non-compliance and then also competitors. And so, you know, how do we arrive at these numbers? Because if you really think about it, if you really look, uh, maybe we're gonna make an argument like, well, we lose all these sales because our price isn't low enough. Well, I would counter that and say 1-800 contacts seems to be doing pretty well. Vast majority of offices, after you take into account discount and insurance and rebates and everything are priced under 1-800 contacts. And actually 1-800 was just purchased for $3 billion by an investment firm. They certainly see the growth. And so if it's not necessarily about low price, then what is it? Well, that's a little bit of what I'm gonna talk about today. So uh, first thing up, reason number one, you're either, and this is kind of two reasons into one, uh, either you're trying too hard or you're not trying hard enough to sell. And so first I'll start off with not trying hard enough. So this would be a typical office where uh, the patient really isn't exposed to any kind of marketing materials up front. Not that you need them. I'll come around to that. And then, uh, you know, they see the doctor. Doctor doesn't necessarily change anything with those, their uh, lenses. And then they're either whisked over to optical or more likely to check out. And then that's the first time they hear uh, something about buying the contacts from you. Uh, usually the presentation at that point is, well, would you like an annual supply today? Because that's what we've all kind of learned you need to say. And uh, the patient might respond, well, um, what's my insurance cover? And then the staff member will say, well, you know, you can get two boxes instead of four. Okay, well, I'll just do whatever that is. Um, that would be an example of not really trying to sell. So why is that a problem? Uh, well, first, I mean, the easiest answer is to say, well, if you're not trying, don't expect you know, better results. However, the other thing, which is a little more subtle is it's actually somewhat insulting to your patients to not try to sell. Think of the, uh, I'll put, it, put you in the, the shoes of your patients. So think of the, the reps that come into your office to talk to you about, you know, anything. And uh, think of the ones that are like really knowledgeable that come in and uh, are ready to talk to you about their program and are ready to try to get you to sign on and uh, have, have that way about them. You know, they, they are focused and they care about your business. And think of how that makes you feel. I mean, it's, it's basically, you get the sense that you're important, that they want your business. It's good to feel wanted a little bit. And maybe you do, or maybe you don't go along with what they're suggesting, but certainly you feel wanted. Now flip it to the reps that kind of come in and you know drop a card off and you know just are here to shoot the breeze and don't really have anything to tell you. Well, that's basically, well, do you want my business or not? And that's what patients feel like when they're being undersold or not sold to at all. It's not necessarily that they don't want to buy from you. It's just that they don't necessarily feel like they're wanted either. And so they figure, as crazy as this might sound, that maybe you don't really need it. And in that case, then they're feel free to go elsewhere. Uh, the other side of that coin is overselling. And so overselling is uh, an example for a typical office would be they, uh, the doctor talks about the importance of the annual supply, which is funny just to go off a little bit. So there's competing studies. One says that patients are very frustrated with the uh, opacity of healthcare costs. 
and wish they would always know more about it. But on the other side, they're very uncomfortable with, or typically uncomfortable with their doctors talking to them about the prices of things. So the way I marry those two together is say, well, before you do things or sell things, whatever, and this is all of healthcare, this is an optometry, um, you know, someone needs to tell them. It doesn't have to be the doctor, it can be someone else. So for that reason, though, I actually prefer the doctors to not necessarily talk about uh, pricing with the patient or very, you know, they can be more casual with it. But, um, but where I'm going with this is patient, you know, patient starts off hearing about it from the doctor. Then doctor leads them over to optical or a contact lens room and they hear about it again and they get that hard sell and they're given their pricing and they write it all out and they tell them, you know, 10 different reasons why they need to be buying from them that day. And then that patient is whisked over to check out and then they get another hard sell and they stamp the contact lens with a approved for annual supply or something like that. And uh, that would be an example of, of selling too much. And so um, that is a problem for kind of a different reason. So now think, well, before, you know, this is on a spectrum, you wanna end up somewhere in the middle. I gave you two examples of the extremes. The problem with the one I just gave you then is that think of when someone is trying to convince you of something. Uh, there's a great book, um, Reith, or Think Again by Adam Grant, great book. And it goes specifically into, um, there's a, a caricature, a caricature they call the logic bully, which gives, uh, it's a way of, you know, trying to argue a point that's giving 10 different answers for reasons why someone should change their mind, you know, say if it's politics or something. Well, the problem with logic bully mode is that when you give someone 10 reasons, they're going to pick the uh, one that is the weakest and go against it that way. Two, it also raises their antenna. If you're giving that many reasons for something, the assumption then becomes, well, if they're having to tell me this many different things of why I should do it, well, they must be trying to hide something. Like, why are they trying to manipulate and convince me that this is a good idea? If it's something that's a good idea and on its own merits, they shouldn't have to take this much time, you know, uh, discussing it or adding so much gravity to this decision. I mean, gosh, I just thought I was buying contacts. And so when you oversell, that's what ends up happening. You actually create suspicious patients and uh, think of yourself, have you ever bought anything when you're suspicious of it? And so both end up, you know, causing a problem and both I kind of have the same solution for, which is, you know, creating a script that follows kind of a certain formula. I'm gonna give you this script I've written down here um, and explain why it works. So my script, my example for fixing both of these is this. So whoever sells the contact lenses, usually check out or maybe optician or maybe someone in the exam room, um, I like to start off with the benefits. So we ship all of our contacts for free. And if your prescription ever changes or you lose lenses, we will exchange or give you lenses at no cost. That's, so pause. That's basically me describing two benefits of buying from our office before I've done anything about price. And why I go in that order is uh, think of like buying online or elsewhere. You're seeing all the benefits before you click checkout, before you hit buy. When you place it, after all the pricing, it seems like you're trying to rationalize the price you just gave them. So if you give them up front, it's kind of like part of the total package. You give it after the pricing and you're trying to rationalize. So in our patients' minds, really should have had my glass adjusted, um, we're wanting to just all, nothing but benefits, right? So right off, you can start off with two, uh, two three tops uh, benefits of buying from your office. And then going back into my script, if you buy your year supply, the retail price of your contacts is $720, which is the total for eight boxes for the whole year. So you're setting the, you're anchoring a high number for what they could have been paying and you describe the uh, number of boxes for which that buys. So it, it kind of lets you, um, so if they have a sphere in one eye and a torque in the other, if you can kind of group that together, just tell them the boxes, they'll feel better about it. So 720, eight boxes. After I apply your insurance, our discount, and the year supply rebate, that number comes down to $340. You save $380 by buying your full year supply up front as opposed to six months at a time. Would you like to buy six months or your full prescription today? End. To pull that apart a little bit further. So you take them from the retail price and think of any time you buy something, um, especially if it's like a, oh, a, you know, a car, of course, it, you're adding items on that front. But either way, what you're doing is setting up retail price, 
you've accounted for all the things that they know they have. They know in this example, they know they have a vision plan. If you don't say anything about it, they think maybe they've forgotten about it. You talk about an in-office discount, something that you're giving them in, uh, you know, you could call it rewards or whatever you want. Um, something that they're receiving by buying more. Um, then you add the, your supply rebate. So they know, oh, there's a rebate on top of all that. Then what is their bottom line number? So it's not a perfect script, uh, but you highlight important things. You highlight one, the total retail price, how much they save by getting it all at once, and what they're going to end up paying overall. So three big things. And then you also provide options. So the last sentence I think a lot of people find interesting is, would you like to buy six months or your full prescription today? Um, why offer the six months? Well, the way we're all built is we all prefer to have options. Um, now, whether the one option is a straw man, like in this case, I've just explained why six months is in a, essence a bad idea to buy. Well, you can still offer it that. They can still make that choice. And if you're not offering that option, then it feels like maybe you're hiding that choice. So what you wanna do is basically give them the option. It fulfills all their needs. You're giving them what's called choice architecture. So they'll decide between your options and then the way you just set it up, you kind of said, well, you're dummy if you buy six months at this point with the script that I've given you. And then, but they make it their choice, right? They make it their decision that they want to buy that. So it's, it's all more powerful with a visual. Obviously, um, people do want to see all of the numbers kind of laid out and the math done for them, but their brains can only hold three numbers at a time. So if you're doing it verbally, you can't, you know, you can't go really in depth and, and tick them all off uh, one by one to uh, explain everything for them. So that is how I recommend scripting that to solve problem number one, which is selling too much or not selling enough. Reason number two, you're telling your patients to shop elsewhere is what I've titled it. So uh, this is an interesting thing that, that comes up. So many offices will either price match or do a price comparison uh, for lenses in the office. And the way that looks is Say a patient comes in, they um, sit down, and after you know going through the exam and everything, they perhaps they used to buy elsewhere, or perhaps they're known to shop elsewhere. And so the doctor or the staff will pull up, say one eight hundred contacts, and say, "Hey, here's your contact lens pricing with us. Here's your contact lens pricing with them. So would you like to buy here today?" Or a patient might ask, "You know, hey, do you price match?" And then I found these online. Here they are. So earlier I said, you know, most offices are priced under 1-800 contacts. You're also obviously the more convenient option because they're all there at once, uh, or you can take care of everything at once. And so what's the harm in doing price comparison shopping? Well, I can tell you, after talking with hundreds of offices, they sell usually a very average number of contacts, you know, just like everybody else sells about 40% annual supplies, which is kind of the industry average. And the reason being is that it's more subtle than that. So sure, you think you're winning on price, but what you're losing in is the uh, brain space of the patient. And so there is a thing, so there's a great book by Robert Cialdini, if you haven't read it, it's called Influence. And they go through, he goes through the, the, all these tools of influence, very famous book. And where we're going with this is that in the end, we have a, a lot of social anxiety to if we don't follow certain um, wired pads that we have in our brain. You know, if someone does a, a favor for us, we feel compelled to do it in return. If someone asks, uh, you know, if we do something for them, we expect it back. And that's how even societies were built. You know, that's a, a basic thing that's built into all of our limbic systems, basically. And uh, because of that, you know, bad actors can use that against us. It's the classic, um, you know, I'm going to give you some something for free and then expect you to buy something after the fact. Uh, but when it comes to, say, in the office, so how this all relates, uh, think of the patient choosing you. you know, they came to your office, they looked you up, they received a great eye exam, had a great experience for your whole office, you've provided this great service, and basically they uh, respect and, and have a great, uh, you have a great amount of authority with your patient. And so everything, these are a lot of the influence factors that Robert Cialdini, uh, Dr. Cialdini talks about in his book. And you have them working in your favor. By the time that exam is over to complete the journey for that patient, they want to buy from you. 
But if you sit down and start saying, hey, let's shop elsewhere. Well, now you've taken all that value, all the value that you've just created in that relationship, all that social anxiety that they feel compelled to buy from you. And then you wipe it away because you basically said, hey, never mind all of these social contracts, you know, all the social anxiety you might feel if you weren't going to buy from us. Uh, we're going to, you know, it's, it's all about price. And in fact, I'm so okay with you shopping elsewhere. I'll shop with you. Look, we'll look together. And hey, looks, looks like I'm the better price. But by the way, if you accidentally look elsewhere, say after the fact and see a lower price, you'll know that maybe I was hiding something from you. So it's really a setup because there's always a lens.com, you know, there's other ones that are cheaper. So it really sets you up to look poorly. Both one, you're telling them it's okay to shop elsewhere and that they shouldn't value the other parts of your service and relationship. And then uh, two, you know, you might just even look deceitful if you're not showing them, say, all the competition. And at that point, if you're trying to price yourself under lens.com or, or similar lower uh, cost options, well, you know, your profit margin's gone. And part of my point is patients don't care as much about price as you think. They really care about uh, service, ease, convenience, completing this you know, customer journey and relationship with you. And so when you do that, you make it all about price. So first step is to stop that. Um, second step in fixing this problem, especially when it comes to price matching, I think that's the more complicated thing because if you've trained your patients for a while to expect to say, hey, I found this online, will you match? It really, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tricky thing for staff to navigate. So you can't really explain the why you've done away with your policy because uh, that comes off as defensive. No one responds to defensiveness, even if you're right. Even if you feel like they have understanding, it's, it's a lot less convincing than you think. And so the best way to go about it is just to say, hey, uh, my script for this is, hey, we've decided, you know, we've ended that policy and instead set our pricing to be competitor with other reputable online retailers and then just follow my other script. So what you've kind of done there is made a point. Well, maybe not all of them are reputable. So all of a sudden that kind of invites a little bit of questions, not as defensive as it is informative. And you've set yourself up to say, yeah, if you're going to compare us, compare us against 1-800. And then we all have those patients. I mean, there are some patients that all they care about is price. Luckily, it's very few because it's almost a, a sociopathic kind of <laughs> thought process to say, have uh, someone come in, you know, look for a frame, take a picture, buy that frame online and say, bring it into the office. I mean, that, that violates so many social constructs that you don't really want those patients. And that's the end result. You know, if you have some patients that are just adamant to price match and they press price match themselves into being unprofitable, and a challenge for your practice, well, unfortunately, you know, you, you want patients that are going to respect your, what you've, uh, value you've offered them and you want them to want to buy from you. So you'll, you'll probably have a couple that will leave just on this alone. However, those were the unhealthiest patients for, uh, your contact lens business for sure. So it's a little bit tricky, but in the end, it, if you can get away from that and more towards the script, you'll be much better off. And then now, reason number three, you have too much friction in your office. I'm not talking about friction on a hot day, legs rubbing together as you're walking around Disney or something like that. No, I'm talking about how many steps, how much energy does it take for a patient to buy something from your office? And what I like to think about is like start off, especially when it comes to checkout. Checkout's the easiest target to look at and say, okay, what's an example of friction? Well, start with the very most basic thing that has to happen. Patient needs to give me money. All right, so that's step one and that's not considered any part of friction, but we can build off of there. Um, a friction example, even within that little micro thing would be to say, well, do you accept all the credit cards or do you have other payment options that you accept? Maybe you accept uh, or don't accept Dogecoin yet, right? So that would be a little bit of friction if they have Discover card and you don't take it. I'm not saying take Discover card, I'm giving examples of friction. Let's say that at that point, your staff member has to do, you know, uh, print three things and has to wait for a prescription to come up from the back. And uh, the person has to wait, you know, 15 minutes for everything to get together. And then when they do come up, they're just told, well, hey, do you want to buy an annual supply? And then uh, when they ask any questions, they have to write things down. And then by the time they 
you know, buy from you. Well, then you have to set up an appointment to come pick up the contacts or we'll call you when they come in. I mean, these are all added steps beyond the most simplest model, which is you pay me and then you get the contacts. Like those are the simple steps. And so step number three would be, okay, how much of that friction can you eliminate? How clear and quickly can you communicate? And one thing that I see a lot of offices do is still not direct ship all of their contacts to patients. Now, this one kind of raises heckles a little bit sometimes. So let me talk about it a little bit, or I'll give you an example of what we did in our office. Um, so basically, long ago, we used to just do annual supplies where free shipping and we'd ship them directly to their house. But anything less than that, we would charge them shipping. And then it would take describing and discussing the shipping fee and they'd mull it around and et cetera. And then eventually one day we just went to shipping everything. We eliminated the shipping fee. We just made it free. And by that, I mean, we increased our costs a little bit. So it was all covered. <laughs> so we didn't, it wasn't actually free, but to them it was free and added benefit. And our sales took off another level. And so why is that? Well, for one, I would say this we're trying to create a, just a seamless customer experience and free shipping, uh, especially when it comes to shopping online is one of those things that people have just come to expect. So if you offer shipping for a price or you offer it on something and not another, A, you've gotten a little bit confusing now because you have kind of two different tiers of potential patients. And then uh, two or three, you, you're, making your you're adding additional numbers that they have to think about in the midst of all of this and you want no thinking involved you just want them happy to buy from you i know my easy decision i can go with it i don't have too many extraneous variables to consider so when you go to free shipping that's that's what you get and then that's the same way that basically you're meeting online right so to kind of go backwards a little bit one of those things that online retailers trump over us is how easy they are to work with because they offer free shipping. They don't have to think about it. Well, if you just match that marketing advantage gone at that point, at that point you win because you also have a brick and mortar location that they can come to with any issue. And so, uh, and then the other thing, you know, think of, think of all the staff time that you can save by just direct shipping everything. Now, some practices, I will say they've countered, Hey, we were in Alaska you know, we can't ship things to people's house or we're in inner city and they might get stolen or something like that. And that's all fine. That, that could be a pain point for your patient and you can let them know or they can let you know that pain point. And the neat thing is what then you're able to provide over any online retailer is like, hey, we need to ship, we'll just ship them to this office and you can come pick them up. We'll keep them safe. So suddenly what seemed like or what was a point of friction before has now turned into a benefit. But the reality is most patients would like it shipped to their house, easy. They don't have to think about it. Um, I also will say some of the friction I've had with, with uh, other colleagues is that they do think they potentially sell and convert more sunglasses sales or something. You know, it's an additional sales opportunity. However, I counter that usually the patient mindset, unless you've really set up a system to heavily influence them to want to shop when they come back to pick up their contacts, um, above and beyond what maybe they could have just done when they were in your office. Um, I really contend, like, I would like to see the numbers that, that shore that out, that I think it's considered more of a negative and a, uh, to bring them back in and more of a value add to send it to their, off, uh, to their home. Certainly it's harder to point out more of the value add of coming in so you can shop more. You know, from a patient perspective, bring them back in and then trying to sell them. That's, that's the benefit you've added. You've added, come in so we can shop, so you can shop more. So I would say, uh, try it. Certainly test and measure the response from patients. That's, that's my policy for everything. Test, measure, and see uh, how the sales react, what people say, what staff say. But in general, uh, offices that have taken on the free shipping for everything, change their pricing around a little bit so it doesn't add costs. Uh, they actually end up selling more annual supplies than when they're making annual supplies just free and trying to charge shipping for something else. So in the end, you know, this, this video was about the reasons why they don't want to buy from you. But the, you know, the uplifting message I have is actually all of your patients 
do want to buy from you. It's, it's wired within them. It completes them. It just, I mean, think of a satisfying experience whenever you gone and worked with a salesperson or gone in a store where at whatever that is, you're, you're proud and happy to give them your business. And most, the vast majority of patients feel that way when they come in to see you. So you will actually have happier patients the more that they buy from you. And, you know, really, I mean, you can't get further from, I mean, closer to a win-win, right? They end up saving more. They, they uh, get better service from you. It stays local. You benefit as well. Hands down, when we, when we typically lose these sales, it's mostly because we've confused our patients. And so you eliminate that confusion. You eliminate some friction. You, you, uh, you know, get the proper amount of sales or selling in order uh, you'll do fantastic and your patients will be happier for it. So, hey, thanks again and hope you uh, enjoyed this video.